Welcome back. Today we're going to be creating a continuous integration platform with WordPress, DigitalOcean, GitHub Actions, self-hosted runners. We're going to go all the way through from a Docker Compose file, which is the very first step, creating the first line, and then we'll go all the way through to actually deployment and where you don't have to worry about anything. You can just commit your code to a branch and it will pick up everything and deploy it all, all for you. Okay, to get started, I've gone ahead and created a new repository. Um, and if I can just click reload, just to show you, obviously this is a, a completely blank repository. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a directory, call this Docker WordPress, uh, change directory into that, that, and then open it up with Visual Studio Code. Fantastic. And then let's get started with some um, docker compose files or I say files file uh, so docker hyphen compose yaml and just to start it off we're going to type in version 3 I've got a video which talks a little bit more in depth as to what's actually going on I'm going to say services um, I'll link to that down at the bottom so um, I'm going to specify my database and this is going to be image of my SQL 5.7 then I'm going to mount some volumes so volumes and this is going to be our db underscore data is going to map to slash far slash lib slash mysql next i want to put my restart policy and that is always so make sure you always restart environment variables i am going to declare word oh not wordpress mysql mysql underscore database mysql underscore database and i'm just going to say wp um because that's the database we're going to be working with then I'm going to say uh, mysql underscore root user user and this is going to be um, oh sorry root password not root user and this is just going to be password next it's going to be mysql underscore user and mysql underscore uh, password so user I'm just going to keep it as root and then mysql underscore uh, password is just going to be password as well you know what I'm just going to move that line up so root password is at the top because I want to keep my database, my user, and my password together. Not for, because the, it would change anything, just because my OCD. Um, okay, networks. Let's link these up in a moment. So this is going to be our WordPress. So let's just say WP network. And then I'm going to knock down on a couple of lines and I'm going to say uh, WordPress and give this a name. So we're going to refer to our web server as WordPress. And then I'm going to open up some ports. The ports I'm going to open up, I'm actually going to specify some environment variables a little bit later. But for now, let's just go ahead and export, uh, expose uh, port, let's say 8000. So port, uh, knock down onto a new line, hyphen, and then I'm going to say port 8000 is going to go to port 80 within the container. So our 8000 is going to 80 in the container. Then I'm going to say depends on um, DB because we obviously need this database, which is up here, to be running in order to run our WordPress instance. Then I'm going to um, mount some volumes, so volumes, and specify an array because we may want more for, uh, more than just one folder that to be mounted in in the future. So I'm going to say anything in the .html folder is going to get mounted to slash var slash dub 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 slash html because this WordPress image that we're about to pull in a moment um, actually um, it mounts it, it brings down Apache with it. So this is the default location in in Apache. You know what let's just put that up at here so image is going to be wordpress and then let's just say the latest again we may put some environment variables in here later so um it, people can specify the, the version that they want to run on their particular machine but then on the production server it'll always run this you know the, the the one that we want okay so we've got um our volumes so let's move on to our environment variables and then i'm just going to say my uh, so wordpress underscore db underscore host and this is db obviously up here we're referencing our database so db and then we want to go to port 3306 and then it's word uh, wordpress underscore um db user these are all just the standard environment variables when uh, when downloading the image and then wordpress underscore db underscore password and we called this password i think it was wasn't it let's just double check root and password yep okay next i want to knock down and just connect those networks up again so network 
and this is part of the WP and then I'm going to say networks uh, WP and then volumes DB underscore data let me just double check did we call it DB underscore data yes we did okay brilliant um, next I'm going to com uh, let's just connect this file up with uh, git so actually you know what let's make let's make sure it's working before we connect anything up so first things first um, I'm going to open up my integrated terminal and I'm going to use uh, control and backtick once that runs then I'm going to make sure docker is running so docker hyphen v and again if I just use um, spotlight I can just make sure docker is running from here then I'm going to do docker hyphen compose up hyphen d and just run docker compose in detach mode and then we've got an error uh, because services depends on contains an invalid type so let's have a look um, wordpress depends on db oh, okay so i have um, not put on this with a new line save that docker compose up there we go we're creating everything and it's done now if we run docker ps and let's just make this full screen for a moment go and i can zoom out of this have to put it all on one line great so we've got our two containers wordpress running latest and mysql running 5.7 and these were created a few moments ago so port 8000 is going to port 80 and so if we pulled up our um window here and we went to localhost uh, port 8000 we get a fail so let's find out what's going on here so docker ps it is running localhost 8000 have i done something wrong there slash wp hyphen um login There you go. It's just because it hasn't it hasn't installed. Okay. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to initialize Git. But obviously, because we've um, we've cloned uh, we've run Docker Compose, it's gone ahead and pulled down all of WordPress. So we're going to have a lot of issues um, with basically we're going to have a lot of new files. Um, but I'm not going to go through and, and worry too much about the Git ignore. Um, so I'm just going to commit everything. So I'm just going to say Git add add the whole lot. May take a second. There we go. Uh, git commit. Let's just say initial commit. And then I think I didn't actually name it the same. I've, I've cloned it into a different repository, haven't I? So let's just go ahead and grab this. So git branch uh, main. To, so just declare our main branch, push to origin, and then, uh, sorry, declare our origin and then push to the main. So let's just go and paste that in. It's uploading everything. Give it a moment and it should be done so now if we come back over to our chrome reload this we've got a working uh, docker wordpress github actions with um, all of our files in there so next what i want to do is go ahead and set up a workflow in github so i'm going to come over here and click on actions now if we scroll down to the very bottom i think it's just more there's a simple um simple setup somewhere yeah simple there you go simple workflow that's the one that we're looking for simple workflow then i'm going to go ahead and delete everything usually what i do is just create this as a file and then uh, commit it but let's just go and create it in here digitalocean underscore deploy uh, you can name this whatever you want um and you can have multiple versions of your workflows um so i'm just going to start typing out in here and i'm going to say name is digitalocean underscore deploy and then i'm going to knock down a couple of lines and i'm going to say on a push to a particular branch and i'm going to say the branch is main so when we push to main i want you to do whatever it is that you know that i'm going to specify down below so i'm going to come down a, a couple of lines and then i'm going to say jobs these are the jobs that i want you to do and i want you to run a build now this build here i've called it something you know this could be your test or this could be whatever uh, i'm just calling this build then i want you to do let's say runs 
hyphen on and I'm going to say self hyphen hosted. Now the reason I'm putting self hosted here is because I don't want it to run within GitHub. I don't want it to run on Ubuntu or anything like that. I want this to this action to be formed on our actual instance. So our droplet instance that we'll go ahead and create. Next, I'm going to uh, knock down a couple of lines and I'm going to say the steps that you need to take. Um, oh, steps is you are going to use actions slash checkout and then you, I want you to check out main. So I'll make sure that you're on the main branch and then I'm going to say name, um, hyphen name. And this is going to, first of all, create a um, a .m file. So the reason that we want to create a .m file is because we've got, let me just pull up my Docker compose here. We've got, um, you know, specific versions, we've got passwords and usernames and the ports in here. And now this is obviously really insecure if, someone is um if someone gets hold of this file essentially they're going to get hold of all of our databases all of you know all of our configurations so what i want to do is pass in some secrets into this file that um, it will be used as an environment variable and then we can uh, ba basically make sure that we've we've looked after you know our our users and our user data so i'm going to come back and i'm going to say run and then what is it i want you to run well i want you to echo and then I'm just going to say, oh, port is equal to, and then I want to give you a secret and then close that off. And then I'm going to echo that into .env. So if I wanted to, to manipulate this, I could just add in like a, a load of um, environment variables and whatever, but I just want to show you how we can get, you can just get one working. The port is going to be equal to, and then I want to pass in a secret. So that secret is going to be secrets dot port and where we get this port and this variable from is over here in our settings so on the repository that we've created if I go over to options scroll down to secrets and then I'm going to create a new repository secret and I'm going to call this uh, port was it all capitals yeah all capitals so port and then I'm going to say this port is 80 so what I'm hoping to do is our port actually overwrites um, basically local will run on port 8000 but whenever we deploy it's going to run on port 80 so we'll uh, we'll hook that up in a second so I'm going to come back over here so I'm going to echo port secret port in into um, our .m file next I want to create this WYSIWYG is frustrating next I want to create um, something else so I'm giving it a name again so this name is just basically when when the the build is actually happening what's what's going to be shown back to me as in what's the current process and the steps that it's taking so um, if it for any reason it crashes at this point I'll know it's crash creating the .env so I'm going to say run build and this is literally just going to be run docker hyphen compose up hyphen d I'm just going to uh, commit that and I'm going to com uh, commit it to the main branch and that should be everything so now if I uh, pull down what we should have is a github and our digital ocean so digital ocean underscore deploy this is our workflow but um, when we push to a main and then we've got the jobs that we need to do Okay, so just to make sure that our environment variables are up and working or, or will work, we obviously need to change our Docker Compose file. So I'm going to come back over to docker-compose.yaml and then where we've got our ports, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a dollar sign, open close uh, curly brackets, I'm going to say port in here, colon hyphen, and then the reason I'm putting a colon hyphen in here is because I'm going to fall back onto a default port. So if if there is no environment environment variable, it will just always declare like port 8000. Obviously, we can go ahead and like, you know change this. So I could say up here, um, let, let's do this and say, I don't know, um, root underscore password and then hyphen and then call it whatever. You know, the default is always going to be password. Um, but as I said, you know, we're just going to keep this simple and just do just do the one. So now that we've got our port, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down our containers. So I'm going to say Docker compose down. That should stop these uh, containers from running. There you go. And it's removed them. So if I do Docker PS, um, we now have um, nothing in here. 
Now what I want to do is just come over here and create a new file. So I'm going to do .env and you know what, whilst we're here, let's just make sure that we've got a .ignore and we want to ignore anything with a .env. Okay, so that's never going to get committed for, you know, by mistake for whatever reason. So I'm going to say port is equal to, and let's just say 1234. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to clear this out and do docker hyphen compose up hyphen D run that and it should be creating our uh, or recreating our containers so now if I do a docker ps and we have still got our file because I didn't save it of course I didn't so let's just turn that down a second docker hyphen compose down Then docker compose up hyphen d docker ps and now we are mapped locally to port one two uh, one two three four is mapping to port eighty in our container. Okay, great. Now just to recap, we've gone through, we've set up docker compose, we've put environment variables in there, we've got that working with environment with variables and we've committed everything to a repository. We've also set up a workflow and we have passed in secrets from our GitHub into our .m file within our workflow. Now in order to do that, what we need to do is go ahead and um, basically set up our droplet. So I'm going to open up DigitalOcean and I'm just gonna call this uh, tutorials. Um, and select the purpose. So let's just say just trying out. I'm going to skip this for now. Okay, this has created a project where area for me. We don't need to. I just didn't want to get muddled in with some of my other droplets. So I'm going to click um, create a new droplet. And then within here, if I go to marketplace, what you'll see is Docker. This Docker um, image basically creates a droplet for us with Docker and Docker Compose already pre-installed so we can just get started. I'm going to come and select the, the basic plan because it's going to get deleted at the end of this. Select you know, a region, it doesn't really matter where. I'm going to keep my SSH, SSH keys and then leave everything else as is. So now that that's gone ahead and, and been created, what I can do is come over back to my terminal window and we need to SSH into this particular box. So I'm going to click copy on the IP and I'm just going to do SSH root at and then specify a um, an IP address. Now, obviously, the um, this IP is not going to exist after this because I'm going to I'm going to um, kill it off. And the only reason that I'm going to be able to SSH in straight away is because I've I've already pre done my SSH keys. So if you don't select SSH keys, you can obviously have to use a uh, username and password, which would be emailed to you. So um, th uh, I'm happy with this. I'm going to type yes, and we should be into our box. And we are. So what I can do now is let's actually let's just clear the window. So do clear, and then I'm going to do Docker hyphen V just to make sure that Docker is installed on this machine. Fantastic, it is. So we've created a droplet, we've added our SSH keys, and we've also checked the Docker version. Next, what I want to do is I want to add a user. Now the reason that I want to add a user is because we're going to be creating a runner in a second within Git. So um, in a minute we're going to come to actions and. As part of running that, we need to specify some files to run, and those files cannot run in sudo. And by default, because we've gone in as root, those files won't run um, ahead of time. So I'm going to go ahead and create us, um, a user which will allow us to run those files. So enough talking, let's actually just do it. Okay, I'm going to add a user, and I'm just going to say Chris. That's it. Okay, so we're adding a new user. What's the user for Chris? I'm just going to say password, and then password. And let's just hit enter a few times and is this information correct? Okay, so we've got a really, really insecure user. Next, what we wanna do is I wanna make sure that this user has got sudo permis uh, permissions because we need to be able to escalate our privileges. So I'm gonna say user mod hyphen a g sudo Chris. Okay, so now Chris has got sudo permissions and then what I can do is I can log in as, as Chris. So I'm gonna say sudo su super user and then who do i want to go in as i'm going to go in as chris so we're now in the exact same box as where we were a minute ago however we're now logged in as chris as opposed to root great so now what i want to do is i want to add that runner i want to make sure that whenever this action happens that um the, the, you know so this workflow happens here and it and it runs a build 
we need to something needs to be reaching out and and waiting for a um a particular um 14 minutes ago i wonder why oh because we've committed stuff um okay so what i want to do is click on settings because obviously we've already gone ahead and set up our our um deploy uh, sorry our our works our workspace sorry it thinks that files are going ahead and it and it's failed because it's got no permissions or whatever because it's obviously self hosted so what I want to do is click on settings sorry before we go to actions and down here on the actions tab um click on that and if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom you've got self hosted runners this is basically um our server watching out for changes so I'm going to click on add a runner and what's important to note, and this has uh, tripped me up a couple of times, is operating system and architecture. Um, now, I've gone ahead and just selected these uh, commands to run and then forgot that I'm obviously on a Linux on the actual uh, droplet. So just make sure that you change your operating system. Then it's literally a case of copy and paste. So I want to copy the actions runner folder. So I'm going to come over here, basically make a directory and then change into that directory. So I'm going to run that. Then I'm going to clone a or, or copy over a, a tarball so i'm gonna copy that paste and it's just curling a, a a massive tar file and then we're going to just extract that so this tar command here is just tar extract extract zip and uh, file and then what file do we want to extract so the file that we've just downloaded so now what we should have within this particular folder if i do an lll we should have a list of files that has been extracted. Fantastic. So now we want to configure it. So by moving down a couple of lines, um, I've got this configure, and this is going to give us a token that our server can watch out for. So I'm going to paste that in there. And what it'll do is it'll take us through a, a little window that we can uh, basically just de uh, define some, some parameters. So the first one is the name of the runner, and I like to just call this GitHub hyphen runner. You can call it whatever you know you may have multiple runners in the future so call it something logical so github runner and then do we want to add any labels i've not found any use for adding any additional labels yet so i'm just going to leave that as is so that runner has been set up now what it's asking for is the name of the work folder so basically whenever you do something and you push your changes live and it goes onto the main branch this is going to be where the files get copied into so the default is underscore work, uh, underscore work but you might have a folder structure which is like um i don't know um builds or whatever um but i'm going to leave it as default and show you what happens with it with the default set and configuration so by just hitting enter it's just going to default to to underscore work and i think it should create that now ahead of time no it hasn't okay because it's obviously not ran any any file so um let's just leave that for the time being it will create it in a moment so let's clear the window just so we've got some some readability so now we've created our um our runner we've changed obviously changed our os we've added that token and we've declared a path that it's going to go into now what i need to do is i need to make sure that chris has got um has got docker permissions and the reason that i'm going to do that is because if i run um dot sh here uh, actually let, let, let's run it and intentionally break it and i'll show you what what tripped me up a couple of times so if i do an ll and here we've got a few um, uh, bash scripts that we can run. I want to run the run. So run, and I'm just going to leave that. What that's going to do is it's going to create this runner and it's going to activate it. So we're now connected to GitHub and it's listening for jobs. Okay, so if I come over to our actions, go back to action settings, and I scroll down to the very bottom, you can see we've got a green icon here and it's saying it's idle. That's basically GitHub, a word that we've got our GitHub runner that we've just declared a second ago and it, it it knows that there's a connection there so what i can do now is i can come over to our actions file and then on our uh, digital ocean deploy there's no point in me pushing any additional changes so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to rebuild this job so let's just rerun it see what happens So this is taking a, a little while. I've, I stopped it a second ago, uh, stopped the record a second ago, but it looks like the build has failed. So no runner matching the specific labels was found was self-hosted. So let's find out what's going on. Jobs build, run build. Okay, sorry. Um, I hadn't actually checked the. I should I should have checked this first because I knew that this was coming. I actually I I actually even said as well ahead of time that it's going to fail. 
Um, so I thought it was giving us a different error. Anyway, enough of that. So the error that we was getting here is permission died, the denied, and this is intentional um, because a moment ago when I said that if I cancelled this off, we needed to add the user Chris to um, to a Docker folder. If I do an LL now, what you'll see is that we've got this work folder. This work folder has been created, so I can change directory into it. And if I do an LL again, what you'll see is we've got Docker WordPress GitHub Actions, so the name of our repo. So I'm going to change directory into that, and then let's just clear the window just for um, so we can actually see things. And again, we I don't know why it creates the uh, a duplicate, so I'm just going to change directory into it again. So Docker change the directory into there, clear the window again, run LL, and now what we've got is our Docker Compose and our HTML folder that we was, we was talking about. Um, it's also created a .env for us, and so if I do an LL on .env, uh, sorry, a cat on .env, um, .env, what you'll see is port 80, because that's taken our environment variable from um, GitHub and echoed it into a, a .env folder. So that's perfect. We know that that's working. We know that our Docker Compose file has come over because if we run a dot, uh, cat on our Docker Compose, um, we know that this is you know what we what we typed out. There shouldn't be anything on the server is what I'm trying to get at because there wasn't an underscore work folder a moment ago until we run this command. Now the reason it failed is because it's got permission denied. Well, that permission denied is because I'm logged in as Chris and Chris doesn't have access to run a Docker file. So if I run Docker hyphen Composer up hyphen d here what we'll see is we actually get the exact same error as what we're getting in um, our actions and that is because our the, the user chris cannot access um uh, docker so to solve that what we need to do is we just need to um, make sure that chris is part of the docker group so let's clear that off and um i suppose first things first i'm gonna exit this out and um that will put me back in as root and just to show you all of the folders that uh, all of the user groups that are that, sorry that do exist if i do a cat on slash etc slash group this will give me a list of all of the groups that have been set up so if we go right down to the bottom i've got a group called docker so i know that that docker group already exists but if for any reason it doesn't doesn't exist what you want to do is you want to do sudo group uh, group add docker that's going to tell us that the docker group already exists um but that is the command that you would need to run so now that it already exists what i can do is i can just say sudo user mod hyphen a g docker and then i can put in a user so in our case in our case it was chris and then uh, what we can do is i can log back in as chris so sudo su um, and then the user that i want to log in as so in this case chris Let's clear this window. So where are we at? We're at the very, we're at the top level. We're in the um, the root folder. So I'm going to change direction to actions, and then in here we had our work folder. In here we had was it WordPress? Or oh, what did we call it? Our Docker WordPress, and then we had Docker WordPress again. But right now, if we're doing LL, what we're what we've got is our .env, our Docker Compose, and our HTML. So now, if I run Docker hyphen Composer. Uh, docker compose up hyphen d what we'll get is it's creating our network it starts it goes off it fetches the images it's going to be creating everything i'm going to go ahead and cancel this because i don't want to run it uh, just here i want it to run whilst the uh, actual runner is is working and everything so clear this all out i'm going to change directory and i'm going to go up three levels because i, I need to make sure that that runner is working and by that runner i mean the run dot sh so let's just run that run.sh so connect to github brilliant it's connected we'll change this in a second so that this service is always running and we don't need to be running this runner um but let's go over to our um our uh, github and rerun this this uh run this uh, i can't speak for some reason let's rerun this job and so you'll see that the build has been in, uh, has been initiated, and this build here is, as we said earlier, if I if I pull up our um, our jobs, it's directly referencing that. So we've had success in creating the .env. It's spat out port into that particular file. We could create multiple of these if we wanted, or or append onto the end of the .env. 
and then if you see here we've got the the build and what it's doing is it's actually processing our docker compose up in a detached mode state so it's watching for any changes uh, sorry it's not watching for any changes it's it's building everything as we speak and then that should give us a success so check out main brilliant so we've had a success now and if we went to our uh, ip address and now previously in our dot env the, the the file was one two three four if we go here this is not going to work it's not going to work altogether so let's go to google for some reason um it likes to just do this every now and then now let's go to that and then the port of 1234 it's just it's not going to load anything the port isn't working however if we take that off and we go to port 80 okay so that was taking quite a while and i couldn't figure out uh, i couldn't figure out like off the top of my head as to why it was taking so long so i needed to cancel the actual server so what I did is um, held Control and C and it cancelled it. And the reason that I needed to do that is because it took an unusual amount of time. So um, if we run Docker PS, what we'll get is we'll get the containers that have been built and that are running. And we can see that everything's running fine. Like So we've got WordPress latest and MySQL. However, if we come over here, we can see that we've got localhost and it's mapped from port 8000 to port 80. So if I come back to my um, Chrome window, and on our uh, the failure to to actually render the the page if we do colon 8000 we get a working instance and that is because we're using an old commit so what i'm going to do i suppose this is a is a good example uh, as to our our docker instance running um i'm going to come back over here i'm going to clear the window and i'm going to run our runner so we should connect to um, github so we're connected listening for jobs but now i'm going to come and have a look at what's changed and we have made a commit uh, sorry we've made a change to our ports and we didn't commit this line which is look for the environment variable or default to port 8000 so let's just say um changed um port env in docker compose it, do it doesn't really matter what the message is okay so we've made those changes next i'm going to push that up and to our main branch Let that finish and then i'm going to open up our github so i'm going to come back over here to our actions and then we you can see that it's picked up on the fact that we've changed the port um, environment variable in docker compose we can click into it and see what's going on with the build and it's it looks like it's it's all been completed so it's created the env it's run the build and the post checks have been uh, successful now if i come back we should have uh, listening for jobs running on port, yada yada yada, and it's been uh, sorry, running job um, job build completed with result of success, so or succeeded. So I'm going to cancel that off, and I'm going to run Docker PS. So now what we've got is our image WordPress image is mapped from port 80 to um, the actual 80 within the container, and that's because it's listening to our .env that was created. So if we come back over here and we get rid of port 8000. We should get a working version and obviously this demonstrates the fact that our continuous deployment would obviously work as well because we've created another commit we've pushed that up the um the actions have acknowledged it and it's it's made the change so i suppose the only final bit to do now is to make sure that we don't have to keep on running this runner because if we weren't running run um, it wouldn't pick up on the fact that this um this action has been performed it would come over here to our our settings our actions it would look for runners and this this runner if i refresh this page right now it would say it's offline so we want to obviously make sure that this is always online and that we're not having to log into the server to actually sort that out so the way that we do that is we navigate back up um, to our actions folder which i'm obviously already in there but um, just make sure that you are in action actions hyphen runner providing that you've copied my my um you know the same convention as me so we're doing it ll we should see run but we also see this services so i'm going to sudo the service oh svc and then i'm going to install this 
So password for Chris, I think it was password, wasn't it? There you go. So we've installed the service. Then I want to run the same command again, pretty much. But however, now I want to start it. So now the action has been started. And if for any reason we wanted to find out as to what's going on, then we can run um, sudo service and we can run a status on it and that'll give us the status as to you know what's going on with with this particular runner so right now that runner is always happening in the background and again just i suppose just to verify that what we could do is we could make a change to some file so let's come over to um here make a new file call it test.php and um let's just put in some file and say echo Hello world, terminate our line, save that, and we've obviously got a change, so we need to commit this and add it to test. So I'll push this up to our repository. I'm gonna open up our actions. It's added a test, so you can see how quick that is. You know, it's almost immediate that it's acknowledged the, the, uh, the change. So it's added a test. The build is, uh, is is in queue at the moment. Setting it all up, running the build, performing the post actions, and everything's been successful. So I've come back over here. We've got no issues, obviously no issues because we're not running anything. Um, but now if I come onto our um, our live website, hit that, we still got success, and we should be able to get to test.php now. Hello world, fantastic. So guys, I hope that makes sense. You know, we've done quite a bit in this this video. We've uh, we've done some SSH, we've done some um, Docker Compose, we've set up digital ocean droplets, we've done actions, we've done runners, we've done uh, actually getting a WordPress instance up and running in a relatively short space of time. But also more importantly, we've got that continuous integration and that continuous deployment. So you can literally just worry about writing code now, commit it to your branches, as long as you're happy with it, and then it'll just deploy the code for you. So, if you do have any questions, as always, please feel free to leave some comments down below. But until next time, take it easy.